Hey everybody, this is Miss Storm back with another video. Today we're working on module one, lesson 11, grade five homework. All right, and this is part two. So part one starts with the top of the problems and then this is the second video. We're gonna go through the partial product and then the word problems in this video. Let's get started. Always, always, always read and analyze your directions first. Here it says draw an, a model similar to the one pictured below. So that's the first thing they're expecting us to do, draw a model. So go ahead and underline that, right? And then it says find the sum of the partial products to evaluate the expression. So we have to find the sum. What does sum mean? In math, at least. Sum is the number, is the answer when you add, right? So you're gonna find the sum by using partial product. Anytime you think about partial product, I want you to think about multiplying, okay? Partial product is a strategy used to multiply. When you evaluate answers, you find answers in math, right? So let's get started. Here is our equation, four times six, and 79 hundredths, right? This is a answer that stops in the hundredths place, a number, okay? So here, we have our four here on our partial product box. Parents, teachers who are unfamiliar, students who are unfamiliar with partial product. This is an easier way to break down multiplication problems, okay? On the one side, you have the number, the first digit that you're going to multiply on the top. You break this digit down into parts, partial products, right? So you break it down into parts according to their place value, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. Here, we have a six in the ones place, so we broke that down, six ones here. Here we have a seven in the tenths place, so plus seven tenths. And in our last product here should come from the nine that's in the hundredths place, okay? So same number here, it's just put in expanded form. We stretch that number on out, right? All right, now we get to multiply each section so that it has its own product. Four times six ones, four times six equals I hope somebody said 24. 24 should be your answer, right? Now we have to multiply the next partial product or the next product here. Four times seven tenths. Four times seven equals 28. 28 tenths will be our answer. How do we write 28 tenths in standard form? That means that there's a 28 that stops in the tenths place, okay? So let's draw our place values. This is our decimal. This is the tenths place. Our 28 must stop in the tenths place. We're gonna put our eight here and we move our two next door. This here is 28 that stops in the tenths place, okay? So 28 tenths is the same as two and eight tenths, okay? Let's continue. Four times nine hundredths. What is four times nine? I hope you said 36. This means that there's a 36 that stops in the hundreds place. Good. So let's draw our place values. We have a decimal here. This is the tens place. This is the hundreds place. 36 must stop in the hundreds place. So we move our three here. Now we have all three of our partial products. They're partial because they're not the whole answer. They're the answer when we broke the number down into place values, right? So we have to add 24 plus 2.8 plus, plus decimal 36. What is the most important thing you need to think about when you're adding decimals? Somebody tell Mr. Um. Yes, I hope you said line up your decimals. Line up your decimals. Guess what you need to do? Line up your decimals. So let's get started. If you don't see a decimal in a number, it's always at the end, right? So here, 24 with a decimal at the end. Good. Now we have to line up our decimals. Line up your decimal. Now we have to go ahead and log in our second number. We have a 2 in the ones place here. And then there's an 8 in the tens place here. So let's put our 8 in the tens place. <clears throat> Are you ready for your next one? Here we have a decimal. Line up your decimal. Now in this number, we have a three in the tens place. So we're going to put our three in the tens place. And then there is a six in the hundreds place. Put your six in the hundreds place. And we have to add all of these together. But it can get confusing, right? I want you to put zeros in all those empty spaces so that you don't mix up your place values. We're going to fill in all of those empty spaces with a zero. Here, there should be a zero. 
here we have a place value there's a zero one should go here we're going to come down here fill this one in with a zero zero and zero this helps us make sure that we don't skip place values or mix any numbers up in our place values so let's start with the lowest place value first zero plus zero plus six equals six good next highest place value zero plus eight plus three Eight plus three is 11. Good. We're going to put the one down. Carry the plus one next door. Okay. Now, decimal plus decimal plus decimal. It's just decimal. I do this step so that we don't forget our decimal, right? Next place value, one plus four plus two plus zero. One plus four equals five. Five plus two equals seven. Good. Seven plus zero equals seven. So we have a seven here in this place value. The last and our highest place value, 2 plus 0 plus 0. I hope you said 2. And our answer is 27 and 16 hundredths. How do I know what place value to say? It's wherever the decimal stops, right? So the last number here stops in the hundredths place. That's the place value that we say. 27 and 16 hundredths is our answer here. All right, let's go back because they have a space for our answer. We're going to put our answer and the space provided always do that because they're looking for the answer there and then I always teach my students to circle the answer so that anybody who's grading can distinguish the answer from the problem all right you're gonna do the same thing for the next one we need a partial product array okay so go ahead and draw your partial product array all right our first digit is six we're multiplying by six okay our second digit, how many place values are here? One, two, three. We need three sections on our partial product box here or array. Some people call it a partial product array, right? All right, we have to log everything in expanded form. So we're going to stretch this number on out by place value. The seven is in which place value? So seven ones. All right, stay with it. The next digit, four, sits in what place value? Four tenths. I'm writing with my mouse, everybody. Be patient. And the last digit, nine. It sits in what place value? Nine hundredths. Let me try and make that a little neater. Hold on. There we go. Nine hundredths. And write your numbers out. Here we go. THS. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so now we multiply. Partial products always multiply, and then you add at the end, okay? Six times seven ones. What is six times seven? I hope you said 42. We're going to put our 42 here. Now you get to move on to the next partial product. Four times, uh, six times four tenths. 24 tenths. I hope somebody said 24 tenths. That means that I have a 24 that stops in the tenths place. Go ahead and draw your place value. This is your decimal. This is the tenths place. Our 24 must stop here, right? Good. Very good. Last one. Six times nine hundredths. What is six times nine? Think about it. You ready? Okay, good. 54 hundredths. Okay, how do we write 54 hundredths? We have to stop our 54 in the hundredths place. Let's draw our place values. This is the tenths. This one is the hundredths. 54 stops here. You got it? Good. Now we have to add all of our partial products together. We have 42 plus 2.4 plus 0.54. What is the most important about adding and subtracting decimals? Line up your decimals. Let's get started. 42. If you don't see a decimal, the decimal is at the end. I'm going to set my decimal up and line up my decimal for the next part of our product. 2 is in the ones place, and we have a 4 in the tenths place. Good job. Last one. We're going to line up our decimal. Here we have a 5 in the tenths place. Good. And a four in the hundreds place. What do we do with all these empty spaces? Because some students are going to get confused. I want you to add zeros. Good. Fill in those spaces with a zero. We have space here. We have an empty space here. And I may have missed one. Hold on. We had an empty space here, here, and one here, 
and here. Good. That helps you stay with your place value group, right? All right. Let's add 0 plus 0 plus 4. 4. Good. You can stop the video as much as you need to so that you can write down. You can re-watch the videos as much as you need to so that you can learn. Practice makes you an expert. Good. Practice, practice, practice. Particular. 0 plus 4 plus 5. 9. Good. The 9 in this place value. Decimal plus decimal plus decimal equals decimal. 2 plus 2 plus 0 equals 4. Good. Last and the highest place value here, 4 plus 0 plus 0 equals 4. So our answer here is 44 and 94 hundredths. 44 and 94 hundredths. Good job. Circle our answer. We have our partial product and we have the addition part here. You got it? You're going to do the same thing with C and then also D. Let's move on to the word problems. First thing you want to do is read and analyze. Leanne multiply 8 times 4.3 and she got 32.24. Is Leanne correct? So they're asking us here, is she correct? Use an area model to explain your answer. Our area model here will be our partial product. So let's get ready to solve this equation using partial product. All right, draw your partial product line. Oh no. Hold on. I have the phone in one hand. Ms. Dorm is trying to be Superwoman. The computer. I am writing with the mouse. <laughs> so you all just be patient, okay? Here we have 8. And then we're going to multiply that by 4.3. We only have two place values here, so I only need two spaces on our partial product. Now go ahead and expand your second number. There's a 4 that sits in the 1's place, so 4 1's, right? Plus, we have a 3 that sits in the tenths place, so 3 tenths. You got it? All right, let's multiply. Anytime you do partial product, you're multiplying here, you add after, right? 8 times 4 ones. I hope you said 32. Good, 32 ones. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do our 8, multiply it by 3 tenths. 8 times 3 equals 24, and our place value is tenths. So 24 tenths is our product, our partial product here. Now, how do we write those numbers in standard form? Because we have to add everything together, right? 32 ones means 32, and the decimals behind it if you're going to add your decimal now. 24 tenths means there's a 24 that stops in the tenths place. So draw your decimal. Here's our tenths place, four here, and there's our two next door, right? Good. Let's line them up. 32 with a decimal at the end. All right? Line up your decimals. Anytime you're adding subtracting fractions, line up your decimals. There's a two in the ones place in our second number and a four in the hundreds place here. Very good. What are we going to do with all these empty spaces? I hope you said fill them in with a zero. Very good. So we're going to put a zero here and here. All right, let's get started. Start with your lowest place value, okay? Zero plus four equals. All right, I hope you said four. Decimal plus decimal. Decimal two plus two. Four. And our highest place value, three plus zero equals. Three, so our answer here is 34.4. Was she correct? What did she say? She said she got 32.24. She was not correct. And our answer, our question says, is Leanne correct? We can safely say that Leanne was incorrect. When you have word problems, it's really good to answer in words, right? So the question says, is Leanne, is Leanne correct? When she got 32.24, our answer is no. Leanne is incorrect. The answer is 34.4. All right, when you're doing these word problems, we need to draw it out, <laughs> work it out, and then write it out. We have all three components. We drew it out. We have our area model. We worked it out. We did our math here. And then we wrote it out. We wrote our answer here. Good job for us. Do you have it in you to do another one, Miss Storm? 
I may have it in me to do one more. Oh, Lord, Miss Doran is tired. Do you want me to do another problem? Are you sure you want me to do another problem? All right, let's try. Somebody give me some energy. Say, go, Miss Durham. Go, Miss Durham. Go. Hey, say, go, Miss Durham. Go, Miss Durham. Go. All right, let me get into it. Thank you for the energy, everybody. All right, Anna buys groceries for her family. Okay. She has hamburger meat at $3.38 per pound. She also has sweet potatoes that are $0.79 cent each. Oh, boy, Anna. Food's getting expensive. And hamburger rolls that are $2.30 a bag. If Anna buys three pounds of meat, five sweet potatoes, and one bag of hamburger, what will she pay for groceries and all? So here's our question. What will she pay for groceries and all? And all mean, usually means we have to add everything together. All right. This is a word problem, so we need to draw it out, work it out, and then write it out, okay? Let's get ready to draw. I'm going to change to, I'll keep it at green. Let's do our area model. Area model is anything that you choose to draw, illustrate, okay, in that area, right? So we're going to use our partial product for our area model. We're multiplying three different amounts. Yikesers and the Mikesers. All right. So here. Uh, hamburger meat was $3.38. Hold on. You got it? Don't forget your dollar sign because we're working with dollars today, right? Uh, sweet potatoes, 79 cents. That's a 0 0.79. You got it? All right, and hamburger rolls are $2.38 a bag. $2.38. And don't forget your dollar signs. Okay, here we go. Now, we have to look and see which one because it, it says here she buys three pounds of meat. So we're going to multiply by three here. And then sweet potatoes, she bought five sweet potatoes. We're going to multiply by five here. And then only one bag of hamburger rolls, so we're just going to multiply by one. Let's set everybody up, okay? The cost of hamburger meat is $3.38 times three. Okay, that's one part. Then we have the cost of the sweet potatoes. That was $0.79 cent times five sweet potatoes. Very good. Now we have the cost of the bag of rolls, which is $2.38 times one bag. <laughs> and I'm going to add a dollar sign here. Lord, Miss Storm's getting tired. I almost forgot my dollar sign. You are ready? Let's do the easiest one first. Which one do you think is easier? All right, this one times one should be super easy. $2.38 times one equals $2.38. Anything times one is always going to be itself. If you need me to, I can. One times eight equals eight. Uh-oh, you all, I got another teacher calling me. Give me two seconds.